I'm going to have only four seasons to win a national championship with a school in NCAA Football 23, and I'll be choosing which random team I rebuild by spinning a wheel. So here we go. I've spun the wheel, and we could land on Florida, Louisville, Maryland, or West Virginia, and it looks like it's going to land on Maryland. I went ahead and created our head coach, Vernon Davis, and it looks like we have Tua's brother on the roster. But we are playing in the toughest division in football, so winning a national championship in four years won't be easy. I definitely expected us to win our first game at home against Buffalo, but surprisingly, we were tied with them at the start of the fourth quarter. Thankfully, we ended up winning by seven, and I found the Talia replacement for the future. After we played on the road at Charlotte, I'd get more into our recruiting class, and this stop on fourth and six is what it took to get our our second win of the year. But we were losing the battle for our future QB1, so I redid the whole recruiting board and these are the main targets. Marcel Clement is a four-star quarterback from Washington, D.C. Michael Cox is a dominant cornerback from California. And Chris White is a four-star receiver from New York. We had to play at Wisconsin this week, and it's safe to say they completely dominated us. But that's all right because we had four seasons to win a national championship with Maryland. And we bounced back the following week when we played SMU. Losing at home to Purdue was really embarrassing, but we had some important official visits to look forward to against Iowa. And we got our first commit in Allen Robinson. I don't think the recruits were too impressed considering Iowa's terrible offense almost outscored us, but we got the win and we landed our quarterback of the future. I knew we wouldn't beat number 11 Michigan State on the road because stopping Steve Merka and Jake Newman was almost impossible. And then we had to play at number one Ohio State the next week, which ended up coming down to the last possession where we lost. Obviously, this was a rebuild and we weren't supposed to have success in year one, so I wasn't except when Michigan took us down. I felt like our recruiting class was way better than expected, so it seemed like Vernon Davis had a decent chance of turning around the program even if we were losing now. If we won these last two matchups, we'd make a bowl game, and I was not worried about Rutgers. Tua's brother took care of business, and it all came down to this last game. With this throw from Talia, we would guarantee the big win, and making a bowl game is attractive to other recruits. Our freshman linebacker won the Bednarik, which is insane, and Talia had a pretty impressive junior your season. We ended up winning the Quick Lane Bowl, and Vernon Davis finished his first year over 500, but he was not happy with all of the kids transferring out. Five kids getting drafted really helps the program's prestige, and so does a top 10 recruiting class. Talia improved a ton during the offseason, but we were still projected a bad conference finish in season two. Opening the year against Charlotte was nice because it was pretty much a guaranteed win to start the year with momentum, and you could tell Talia was set for a wild final ride. He obviously dominated the following week against an FCS school, but then after that, at Wisconsin, he wasn't able to get us the win. Since it was only year two, I was more worried about another good recruiting class, and Greg Smart could be Vernon Davis's first five-star recruit ever. We had to bounce back against Illinois in the rain, but surprisingly, we weren't able to. So now, we had to travel to play our rivals at West Virginia, and since our offense put up such a poor showing against the Mountaineers, Vernon Davis decided it would be best to put the freshman quarterback in as QB1 because if we were going to win a national championship, he needed as much time as possible to develop into a star. And surprisingly, he won his debut in overtime with a pretty solid stat line. I'd love to say the next game at the Big House went just as well, but it did not with us falling to 3-4. and four. However, it was now official visit week, so we needed the freshman to step up badly. And Marcel Clement was able to put us up with two minutes left. After Drew Aller led Penn State to a field goal, we had a chance to win the game, but the kick fell short, and then we lost in overtime. Luckily, we still got a lot of recruits to commit, but then we lost to Ohio State the following week at home. If we wanted to make a bowl game this year, we would have to win our final three matchups, and that would start with a snow game in Indiana. Fortunately, in the end, we were able to run out the clock, and Marcel Clement picked up another win. We had to play at Rutgers in our next game, and once again, our freshman quarterback got it done. So our year two bowl eligibility came down to this matchup, and Steve Merka blindly threw a halfback screen in the fourth quarter, which led to a Bo Brade interception, and he would take it all the way back to the house, so we actually became bowl eligible. And I felt like we set ourselves up well for the final two years, but playing in the Big Ten East was so difficult. We ended up getting a bowl game against Texas State, and once again, we had a linebacker win the Bednarik Award. I was so proud of how well Marcel Clement played as a freshman, and he won his first bowl game ever. We barely lost any of our players, and we had the 13th best recruiting class, so the expectations were much higher for this season. We had one of the best receivers in the country, and it was time for year number three. It's always good to get a win, but when you only beat an FCS school by five points at home, it is a little concerning. So I was happy when our next opponent was Bowling Green. We ended up playing much better against them, as senior wide receiver Rakeem Jarrett 
had an impressive performance. Big Ten play opened up against Illinois, and we were ready to fight in our division. This touchdown to Raheem Jarrett in the fourth quarter tied up the game, and then this dot for Marcel Clement would win it for us at the last second. He was off to a good start this season, and he wanted to beat West Virginia badly. On the last play of the first half, Marcel scrambled into the end zone to tie it up, and by the end of the game, we were setting up to kick the game winner. It felt good to improve to 4-0 while also beating our rivals, and now we got to travel to Nebraska for a tough matchup. I couldn't believe how lucky we were to have Marcel Clement at quarterback as he continued to dominate every defense he faced this season, which ended up getting us ranked in the AP poll for the first time in this rebuild. We were hosting the Hawkeyes this week, and once again, we did just enough to pick up another win on the year, and that would make us bowl eligible already. The race for the Big Ten East title was looking like a bloodbath, but before we finish out the rest of the season, there is one last chance to enter the jersey giveaway. It's any of your choice, and it's brought to you by Underdog Fantasy, the best site to use for sports pickums. To enter the giveaway, you need to create an Underdog account using the first link in my description or code Bordeaux. Once you make a deposit, you're in, and the winner will be announced November 1st. Underdog lets you win money by predicting stat lines, and here are a couple that I nailed this weekend. Now, it's time to resume the Maryland rebuild, and it started when we hosted number 20. Michigan. It's safe to say this score was an embarrassment, and the next week we had to play at a Penn State wideout. It was very intimidating, and we had to figure out how to bounce back. With a minute left in the game, we had an opportunity to go down the field and take a lead, and this is when I knew Marcel Clement was that guy. He delivered a perfectly thrown bomb 50 yards down the field, and we took a one-point lead on Penn State. But unfortunately, our defense blew the game, and the tough matchups seemed like they were never ending. We knew that our quarterback position was set, but everybody else wasn't ready for a championship run yet, and we had completely fallen off the last three weeks. So I knew that the playoffs weren't happening this season, but we were definitely improving as a program. It felt good to finally win a Again, and at this point, we were shooting for racking up the awards, and Rutgers was the perfect opportunity for that. Or so I thought. We lost, and it was embarrassing, so with one game left in the season, we had to play against Steve Murka, but not Jake Newman as he was out with an injury. We needed to get a win against the Spartans, but once again, we struggled, and our bowl game would not be a gimme this year. Linebacker Ruben Hypolet won his second Bednarik and the butt kiss, while our sophomore quarterback brought home the O'Brien. Rakeem Jarrett somehow didn't win any awards, and he wasn't able to win a bowl game either. I couldn't believe we finished 7-6 and six for the third year in a row, but we had a quarterback that was set in school records, and I couldn't wait to see how he played in his junior season. Losing two of our best players would really hurt, but it was time to see how good Marcel Clement really was. We started the year projected to finish 57th, but I can promise that we'd do better than that. We wanted to reach the college football playoffs, and we started our fourth season with a dominant win. Marcel Clement really threw for seven touchdowns, and he wasn't stopping against Minnesota. Even if it was a close finish, he led us to our second win of the year, and we were not slowing down against an FCS school. Marcel Clement continued to prove he was the best, but we had a tough matchup at undefeated Nebraska, and this one was not a cakewalk. Fortunately, our defense clutched up at the end of the game, and we picked up our fourth win of the year behind an amazing quarterback performance. Our last non-conference game of the season was against Marshall, and even though we would tie up the game on the last play of the third quarter, it shouldn't have been this close. Fortunately, we ended up getting a much-needed stop in overtime, and we avoided the upset, which landed us inside the AP Top 25. We played at Iowa, and this game would end up coming down to the final possession, but you usually win when your quarterback goes over 500 yards. Our division was even harder this year than last year, and we had to play undefeated Michigan at the Big House. Marcel Clement put us up three at the end of the third quarter, and he would lead us to one of the biggest wins in Maryland football history. He was easily going to be a first-round pick, and he needed to stay at this high level of play. This was a top-10 matchup, and the rain was making it a tough defensive battle. In the end, we escaped with another win, and we were one game away Way from actually winning the division. Marcel Clement was finally in the Heisman race, and I couldn't believe we were actually 8-0. At the end of the third quarter, we were able to get within three on the Buckeyes, but unfortunately, that would be the closest we would get to coming back when we needed one stop on defense, we couldn't get it. Ohio State was going to leave on top, and we moved down a couple spots in the polls. If we won the last three games of the year, we would still have a shot at the college football playoffs, and I felt like it was really possible. Rutgers obviously couldn't hold Marcel Clement, and he finished with a another wild stat line which would shoot him up to the top of the Heisman boards. We ended up winning our last regular season game of the year against Michigan State and we had to pray that we snuck into the top four. Somehow Marcel Clement lost the Heisman race and we got snubbed from the college football playoffs. We can admire Marcel Clement's amazing junior year but in the end I failed to get Maryland a championship in four seasons. 